Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and today is an episode of M Scrap Busters and that's a weekly challenge here on my channel where I try to um, help you use up all those little scraps that you have left over from projects and um, sometimes we don't need a whole brand new collection of something. Sometimes we can get some things done, accents for our journals out of our scrap pile. So today is a fun one. It's a little twist on another um, kind of flappy pocket that I made um, a couple of years ago. This one is larger and it's got a little bit, it's a whole lot easier to put together. It's one piece and it's just a cut off from a 12 by 12. So um, if any of you have 12 by 12 cardstock at home or you could even use um, eight and a half by 11 if you cut it down a bit and add just a little bit to the end of it. But we're just going to go over how to make it with 12 by 12 cut off. Um, this is five inches tall and it's 12 inches long and I'll show you how it folds out and flips out but this is a flip out flappy wrap around pocket with a notepad and I'll go over how many pockets there are on this nice little dynamo thing too. Um, first off to hold it together on our page I've got just a gold paper clip and one of these little um, tags. These came in one of the I think e-club kits not too long ago and all I've done is put a little sticker on each side of this and those stickers come from the 49 and Market Artistry, uh, Vintage Artistry Nature Study Wings and that's the um, washi tape and it's kind of like a vellum looking transparent sticker. I've been telling y'all all about these. That's what that is and it's what that is and now right now we have some it's called Spice. The collection for 49 and Market is called Spice and it has pumpkin. It's like an, an ode to pumpkin spice. It's got pumpkins and leaves and all kinds of folly things on it. That is in the shop right now at scrapbookingwithme.com. But um, anyway, I've been telling y'all about those rolls of stickers. I love them. They are, some of them are really tiny and can go in really small places like that. Some of them are a little bit bigger. They've got labels on them, bulldog clips on them. Gorgeous stuff. Anyway, that's what I've got holding this pocket closed. And we've got a pocket here on the front. Now I've got this paper clip on here so those are in there real good and tight. They're not going anywhere. I take the paper clip closure off and we have a pocket here that I've got two little tickets and these are Betty Ann Renfro tickets. She has those. I'm pretty sure they're her industrial tickets on her Etsy shop. I will try my best to find them and leave you a link to those. They come in handy with so many things as far as um, getting some ephemera added to your projects. And then up here we've got a pocket and this piece here, I've put a tab on the top of it with our tab punch that we have in the shop, but this piece is a project life card y'all a three inch by four inch card fits perfectly in the top of this for the dimensions that we are making this uh flip out flappy wraparound pocket now you can make these any size you would like but i wanted it to be able to house some project life cards three by four cards just because i have an abundance of them okay we flip it over and we have another pocket just like the front on the back with more of Miss Betty Ann Renfro's industrial tags in there. Another one of those Project Life cards there with a tab at the top. But then this flips out and we have one of my faux tea bag pockets here that I just adhered in. You could make another traditional pocket just like this on this side if you wanted to, but I just had these um, that I had made. Mm, was it an M Scrap Busters? Anyways, it was a video a while back. I'll try to remember to link that in the description box below where I made the faux tea bag pockets, but that's what that is. I've just glued that in and that's a pocket. And then here's our little notepad. And I have used gorgeous papers and they're one-sided. I love that you could fold this up, crease it, and journal 
upside down that way on these if you wanted to. And I think I have like six sheets in this little notepad. And they come from a collection. I think it's die cuts with a view. Nope, it's color box. Color box vintage treasures. We carried this a while back in the shop. And this has got some of the prettiest papers in it. And they are one-sided, so you've got plenty of journal space on one side. So that's why I like using those in little notepads and things that I make. So that's where that comes from. Let me get that put back over here and out of the way. And then um, you close it back up. You can put your closure back on it. And then when you close your journal, You've got a nice little taggy hanging out there. A little something something on the outside of it too. I love this one and it's super easy y'all. So here we go. We are going to make this flip out flappy wrap around pocket. Ain't that a mouthful? You'll need a few things to make this pocket. You'll need some adhesive. You'll need some kind of scoring tool. I have the score pal. It's old as the heels. You'll need that. Your base piece will need to be of cardstock. It doesn't have to be really thick cardstock, but it needs to be thicker than um, you know a traditional paperweight. And this one, like I said at the very beginning, is five inches tall by twelve inches wide. My baby has made it home, so now I can silence my phone. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, a score tool of some kind. We will be scoring that in just a moment. You'll need some scraps to kind of decorate your pockets up. You'll need some 3 by 4 cards like I did um, in the original uh, to make your little inserts for your back pockets. You're going to need some scissors, of course. I've already covered adhesive. If you want to round corners, get your corner rounder out. You'll need something to make a notch at the top of your pockets. I'm using a, a one and a half inch circle punch, and um, you know we'll just go in halfway on that to make our little notches. Then you'll need some kind of tab punch, whatever tab punch you have works. Um, I also use my tiny attacher, Tim Holtz tiny attacher, to uh, put together the little notepad. So you'll need that. And you'll need some kind of lightweight paper that would be easy to write on. So that's my papers there, one-sided. There they are. Okay. Uh, if you want to make a closure like I made, just get out a paper clip. And mine are gold, don't have to be gold, you can do whatever color you want. And then um, have some type of little dangle that's got a ring on it that you can attach to your paper clip. Then some kind of little ephemera to add into your pockets on the front and the back. Alright, so here we go. Easiest scoring ever on this one. This uh, paper comes from a uh, Stamperia collection called Vagabond that I was totally not into. <laughs> but I had used um, one of the Tamer <laughs> papers in the collection for something, and so I couldn't put it back in the shop and sell it to anybody that wanted it. So that's what I'm using for this project. And Bethany is home, and little Lila is alerting me that she is at, at home. So that's what that was, her little howl. For three pounds, she sure is a loud little Yorkie. So we're scoring at four inches, and then we're scoring at eight inches. Told y'all, very easy. Four inches and eight inches. That's all you're going to need your scoring tool for, so you can put that away. And just score both sides both ways. So fold over and score it and then come over on this side, score it that way too. We want it to be able to go both ways until we figure out which way we're going to put it into our um, journal. Um, one of the things I didn't like about this collection was, so here's Oceanic Steamship Company. 
Well, there it is again. Same thing on both sides. See? And the little creepy guy is there in the middle on both sides, too. And it just had some of the more um, simple, um, what am I trying to say, designs on it. Because it was like the same on both sides. I didn't like that. And I don't like creepy guy, so... Y'all know me. I don't. I don't even like those little um, guys from Tim Holtz. The um, <laughs> what is it? The mini people that's old and they're so creepy. But I digress. Um, what we are going to do is figure out which side of the page we want this to flip out on. So you can make it so it flips out on this side, or you can make it so it flips out on that side. I made that one, so it goes that way, because guess what? Creepy guy is on the back side. He's glued down, so you can't see him. Ha, ha, ha. Um, so let's go right here, and let's figure out which way we're going to do this. So we're going to... Fold it this way and fold it that way. And that's pretty good. All right, let's come this way. Fold it that way and fold it that way. Now, I will be covering up Creepy Guy right here with our notepad. So that works. And then... Oh, yeah, that works. Let's do it that way. Then creepy guy's going to be um, <laughs> glued down there. So that works. Yay. Now I'm going to figure out, just to keep my sides in my head where I know they're going to go, like I did over here on this one, I'm going to start inking here in a minute, and I need to keep in my head the right way this is going to be laid out. So I'm going to round the corners of the side that does not have the flip out. Okay, this side does not have the flip out, so I rounded these corners. And now this side is going to have the flip out. So I'm doing it mirror image the way I did that one. So this side that does not have the flip out, it's just going to have a pocket on it, will need to have rounded corners. And that just helps my brain. So there is rounded corner there and rounded corner there. I'm going to go through with my vintage photo and I'm just going to ink everywhere. Both sides, all of the folds on either side of it, all of it. Just go through, ink all your edges front and back and then come back to me. Now that I have all of my edges and my little um, folds inked, we can go ahead and start gluing down. Now you can use liquid glue, you can use the really thin um, score tape, whatever is your go-to glue. And I usually, when I'm making these kind of pockets, I usually try to put them closer to the bottom because it does give your page some weight but it's not something that's just going to tear your page out but I just like putting them at the bottom so that when you're turning the pages it's not you know at the top and gives it a chance to to rip it so anyway that's where I put mine um I am not <laughs> gonna glue it into this journal since I've already glued this one here but just to show you I'm going to get a regular old coffee dyed coffee stained page and I'm going to fold it in half listen to that crinkle I love it and I will add this one to this loose page that could go into a journal okay go ahead and um, decorate it up some if we want to. Let's do it this way. I like that edge. We can leave that edge like that. And we are going to your side that has your rounded edges. That's the one we're going to work with first. We're not going to worry about the fold part. We're just going to go glue at the top of one edge. 
and then all the way across the bottom. And of course, you probably drive glue a lot straighter than I do. And kudos to you because I just don't. I never have. So you're just going to get your paper on the edge where that fold is and make sure you're giving yourself just a little bit of space at the bottom there. Fold it over and go ahead and adhere that down. And then flip that over. So here's our page in our journal, okay? We've got it adhered down on that side. Then you're going to flip it over and this middle piece is going to get glued down on two sides. You don't have to worry about the fold. It's not going to go anywhere because it's going to get adhered. So you're going to go across the bottom and goodbye creepy guy. <laughs> ah, you're getting glued down on my page. And of course I'll get ink, I mean glue all over my fingers while I'm doing that. Always keep a rag close. I call mine my messy rag. So you can wipe off. Okay. So then your page in your journal, you've got it uh, glued down on this side, except that you've got an opening here for a pocket. And then this is going to flip out and you've got it open here for a pocket. Now let's go ahead and put on our front and our back traditional pockets. And my little piece is about two and three quarters tall. And then I'm going to cut them just a touch under four inches. And then I will put my little notch in the tops of both of them with my circle punch like that. And then for this back one, we will need to round the bottom corner when we put it on. So here's this. I'm going to go ahead and get my corner rounder punch and round that corner. And then that lines up just right. And we'll put some scrap paper across the front of that one. Let's go ahead and ink it with some vintage photo ink. And I wanted to take this time to um, update everybody on Mama just to let you know um, she has had it rough for the last, um, I would say, week. She's um, not well at all. And um, she's really struggling with this tooth pain. On the other side, you don't have to round a corner because everything's straight, remember. So we're just going to adhere that one like this. Um, she is really, really struggling. And um, her oral surgeon found what he believes is the issue. Um, and it is nerve pain that she has from where she had her other oral surgery. And there is actually a piece of bone floating around and that bone keeps hitting up against that nerve. That floating piece of bone keeps hitting up against that nerve and it is causing her immense pain. <laughs> and um, it, like, it is like the one of the most helpless feelings, not being able to do anything to help her because, you know, Mom's pretty active. Now, she she doesn't travel a lot, but she is pretty active as far as um, the business and getting things done. And um, she hasn't been here lately. And she's just not acting like Mama. So we are um, praying, hoping, lifting her up that this next oral surgery she's going to have is going to help her and um, that one is scheduled for tomorrow that will be Friday October the 6th and it just so happens to be the day before her birthday so um, there's that too and she's 
dealing with that and not having Daddy here on her birthday again and it's just it's just some hard times here lately. So I thank you all for thinking of her and continuing to watch her videos over at her channel, um, Scrapbooking with Me Crafts on YouTube. She is Miss E for anybody that does not know that. Um, I thank you for going back and watching some of her other videos because I'm I'm just telling you her YouTube money does pay part of her bills and um, she's she's kind of um, I'm not gonna tell you she's struggling but she is um, watching her pennies right now because she is not able to make videos so that's a little cramp and um, things she needs to do and buy and pay and all that so it's just been rough but y'all continue to pray for her and it, uh, her surgery is tomorrow afternoon early afternoon so y'all just keep her in mind I would appreciate that so all I did while I was chatty Kathy was put some scrap paper there and then I'll come over here and it's just collage paper I think it actually came from Timu or somewhere like that but I'm just getting a little piece of it tearing it and then I'll tear the other side too and we'll add it on want that to be a little bit shorter and it's perfect width so that works it's four inches wide but you use whatever scrap you have I want to take that little point off and create another point but that one's not as bad okay and then I'm just going to ink it and that's going to be our decoration for our front and back pockets And I'm using Vintage Photo Oxide Ink today. And just, I barely, because it's, like I said, it's collage paper. It's not thick at all. So I just barely put some glue on the back of it. And get it adhered on. Just like that. Then we fold out this piece so we've got that pocket now we have this pocket this pocket and when we fold that out we've got that pocket now we need to make the notepad part of this so right here let me show y'all again there's our notepad piece right there so on this one we're doing mirror image this one's folding out to the right this one's folding out to the left so what we're going to do is put our notepad here and I'm just going to cut down some papers and I will cut them down to just a touch under five inches tall so maybe I'll go to four and a quarter. Mm, let's see. Yeah, let's go four and a quarter tall. And let's put it over there just to make sure. You know, you're supposed to um, measure twice, cut once. Yes, perfect length. So four and three quarters, four and three quarters. If I said four and a quarter, I apologize. Four and three quarters tall by three and three quarters wide. And that makes for perfect length and width to go on that one panel and cover up the creepy guy. Okay, I'll do two of those out of that cut off 12 by 12 paper that I had and 
and then I think I will round the corners of the bottoms of these just to give it a little bit more something something yep just like that then I'm going to grab a piece of scrap this is just from my scrap pile and I'm going to cut this down to fold over the top of the notepad to hold it there so I will cut this just a little shy of four inches and then about an inch and a half wide and then I'm going to fold it in half you can use your score pal your scoring tool if you want to just gonna fold it in half and get your bone folder really burnish that down then hold it up against your papers just to make sure that it's going to cover everything that's not hanging over too far it's not looks good I am going to be a little extra and round those corners on the bottom of that and then ink it on the front you don't have to ink the back because it's going to be glued into your project this is where the Tim Holtz tiny attacher comes in you're going to sandwich those up in there fold it over make sure you're happy with placement and then I put three at the very top so one two three and I'm not concerned that they're not straight if you want to make them straight make them straight then just to make sure that I don't have to wait on anything and it is a little weighty <laughs> we're not waiting and it's a little weighty I'm gonna put on adhere it on to my project to my flappy pocket with some score tape and let's get our pointy tool to take the backing off I'm going to turn it sideways and make sure I don't go over the flap on that side it's not hanging off the end there and we're all even okay there there okay press that down and we've got our little notebook made into it there's our little pocket there our little pocket there another pocket there another pocket there so now all we need is a pocket here and I used on the other one one of my tea stain pockets just like that that one was a little wider but I think for this one I will go ahead and just do another traditional pocket you can do whatever style shape of pocket that you want you could even do a secretarial pocket like this if you wanted to because your closure that you put on there is going to hold it in um, let's go with and go matchy matchy a little bit um, with the piece that was cut off and we're gonna go just a touch under sorry can't see that just a touch under four inches and that's gonna go right there and like I said we're being really matchy matchy with this one and ink it up all sides then add ooh, 
Nah, it's good. I was about to say, I think I might like the back side better than I did the front, but nah, it's okay. I'm going to go three sides with my liquid glue and put that in there and it lines up perfectly with that line that's back there on the back side of it. I like that. Sometimes matchy matchy works. Sometimes I could care less if it matches. Okay, so there is our flip out flappy wrap around pocket complete. You can add some more decoration to the outside if you want to. All you're going to do with your paper clip, I'll show you how I put this on. If I can now get it off, I will show you how I put it on. Let's open up that little loop and bring it out of here. Okay, so anything that you've got a little ring at the top with a dangle can go on the end of a paper clip. And all I do is pull out that middle, the smaller loop, push it in. You're done. It's on there. Your little dangle is ready. And then this one I would put on like that. And if it was in my journal like this, it would hang out like that. Too cute. Then you would just get you some ephemera, add to your pockets, front and back and middle on this one. We've got pockets there. Let's count them up. One, one pocket back here. Two, three, four, five pockets in this little thing. I love it. And then the little um, three by four project life cards go in there. You could even make them a little bit longer if you wanted to. Maybe a three by four and a half would go in there really nicely and you'd have even more journal space. These also fit into your little pockets that you put here because they're only three inches wide. That one looks nice there. I like that. And then you've got your notepad. You can decorate up that front page of your notepad if you want to. But I just love this flip out flappy wrap around pocket with notepad. And I hope that you have enjoyed it too. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below and I will try my best to answer it. And y'all have a great day. God bless. I will see you in the next video. Bye y'all.